Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this channel. But today, what's going on? We're gonna do some vector maths and just explain a few things today. Now, I found a really good page though for vector maths. It's at the page called mathisfun.com, algebra vectors. And then you just go in here and they kind of illustrate everything I'm about to show you anyway. And how uh, addition works. So, this is gonna shorten the video a little bit because I do have images here from this page right here. You can go check it out. Uh, you can add vectors. So a vector, remember it's a magnitude in a direction, just like this state here. And you get a, another vector, which is kind of an addition of these. And that's how you, like if you look at this, this is a pretty good image. Like you, you're going forward in the plane. The wind is coming down on the plane. Your airplane's velocity is then going to be the resulting of these two vectors. See how the wind is kind of negative going down to the right? And it's going to add some right momentum to the airplane and it's going to slow it down so the airplane's velocity is a little shorter and it's going a little bit to the right and you can subtract vectors by flipping them around and adding them to another vector so a is a positive vector b is a negative vector so a plus minus b is just a minus b okay you don't have to do that you can just do a minus b straight up and it's going to give you the next one see how you kind of push it to the left and the thing with vectors is you can move them wherever you want. They're still going to have the same length and the same size and the same direction. So even if you move your vector like up here, it's going to have the same size. Because remember, tip minus tail is going to give you the same value no matter where you are in the coordinate system. So I can just move this up here and do a minus and then you're going to get this. Um, and yeah, I mean, they show really good pictures here. You can go in here and check it out. Adding vectors, subtracting and stuff, do some of these uh, calculations. But the two important ones, and, and a good thing to notice, is a vector versus scale. This is a good thing they, they point out because if you have a two different types of multiplications you can do on vectors, you have a dot product, which is kind of weird. I'm not really sure still what it gives you, but it, there is an angle between two vectors. Maybe I can show you in the image they show a let me see where is it a dot product dot product bro let me see if it shows you down here well basically um it should there we go i'm sorry i missed it uh well dot product here you got two vectors and you got a theta theta is just a a symbol for a degree or angle between two vectors and it basically I think it gives you the cosine or sine or something for that vector this is how you can you can calculate the dot product the length of a the length of B they're multiplied and then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them and it's supposed to give you some scalar back and a scalar and a vector basically a scalar is any number any number that is a number just a number not a vector doesn't have a direction or anything it's just a number one two three four all these are scalars Okay, what, what you call is a number is a scalar. A simple number is just scalar. Scalar is another name for that. A vector is, well, what we've been talking about, a, a direction and a magnitude. And that is usually with two to three or four or whatever, whatever, how many dimensions you have. But two to three in our case, numbers in series, right? So the X and the Y. And the thing is that a dot product gives you back a scalar, a, a simple number back after the multiplication and a cross product gives you a resulting vector so it's a vector that is orthogonal to both your other vectors that you're multiplying with orthogonal is basically there's 90 degrees between that new vector and both of your other vectors okay it is direct like orthogonal to them but you'll see that in a in a in a picture here see you have a and a b you multiply them there's 90 degrees between both of those vectors and your new vector so this is good for like reflection calculating, normal calculating, uh, and stuff like that. And uh, it's good to know. So cross and dot. Just remember these. Practice a bunch on cross and dot multiplication. And I'm going to show you what a normal is. So imagine you have a surface, a floor, or whatever object you have with a surface, right? You want to calculate how light is going to bounce off and stuff, right? Now you need for that you want a straight up vector that goes from your uh, from your the surface straight up 90 degrees in every way right 90 degrees 
like this. How do you calculate that? Well, remember, in 3D, all of these things here are points. And a, a uh, like square like this is nothing more than two triangles put together in the graphics card, right? These points are all used to create this thing. Now, these are vectors. Between the points are always vectors. That's why we're doing vector math. They have their direction like this. Oh, oh I'm sorry. This looks like crap. Uh, let me see. Let me use the brush thing instead. Oh, my God. What the hell just happened, dude? That was weird. Uh, well, there is a direction on all of these and whatever, and you can manipulate that as you want. A tail and a head. Now, to get the resulting vector, remember, like I said, a vector can be anywhere in space as long as it has the same size and everything. You can say now that the vector is here. The vector here is the same as the vector there. Okay? The calculation of these two is going to give you a vector. You can put it wherever you want in space. It's still going to be the same size. So, for this triangle, the normal is this, this A uh, vector and this B vector, cross product between them, A cross B, not the dot product, the cross product is going to give you this normal. Okay? This, and this normal is the same for this triangle because they're kind of put together, right? And it, they create a square. They have the same surface and the same vector angles and everything. So this normal can be shifted anywhere here and it's going to be the same right at any point in this square the normal is the same so we can calculate it for this triangle and use it for the whole square now you have a normal pointing straight up because two vectors multiplied by each other in a cross product way will give you a resulting orthogonal normal and this normal is is orthogonal to both of these vectors 90 degrees from this vector 90 degrees from this vector whatever it's, it's going to point straight up or straight down so you're going to have to make sure that you know which way up is all right which way the front facing part of this triangle is and the graphics card can handle that for you uh, but anyway for now this is good to know this is a cross product and a dot product would be the theta angle here multiplied by the length of this vector b length of b and length of a okay so that that would be the dot product and that would give you back a scalar and you can use that for some some things like direction and stuff like that but but still it's good to know that you can do it and uh, yeah so that's it now if you want the length of a i have the formula right here it is the square root so of the x part of a multiplied by 2 plus the y part of a multiplied by 2 plus the z part of a multiplied by 2. Now if we're doing it in 3D, if you're doing it in 2D, just take away the z part, alright? That's it. But in 2D, or in 3D, this is how you do it. And then you'll get the length of a. Because remember, this is a vector with a y, z, and an x value. The length is just going to give you a scalar. It's going to give you one number. It's going to be a length of this vector. Okay, in units, in a unit, like in, in, in numbers, in one number. And you can use that for a bunch of things. For normalizing vectors, for example. Or for the dot product, which you can, which you can do this as well. I'm just going to write that. Is the dot product is, can also be calculated by the length of A multiplied by the length of B multiplied by the cosine of the theta angle between those two. So you can do this or this. It doesn't really matter. Either way, uh, you, can, you can find the dot product. But yeah, this is going to give you a length. So how do we normalize a vector? Remember, usually you want the normals. This is a normal, right? You don't need the, like, the resulting vector is going to be huge for a square it might be 50 50 60 60 60 or whatever like huge right you don't want that you want this normalized because it's going to be used not as a velocity or a force or something it's going to be used as a direction only its size doesn't matter only its direction matters because the light is going to bounce off and be calculated the pixel at that normal is going to be calculated using it and we don't want it to be crazy we just want it to be from minus one to one and how do you normalize it how do you normalize a, 
a, a vector. So the normal is going to be, uh, let me see, where is it? The length of A, uh, let me see, how is it? Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. The length, I think they, they actually, so we can, we can actually show you this. So I think I found a good picture right here. So this is good. Thank you guys for waiting. This is good. Uh, this is a great picture for normalizing right here in WikiHow, whatever. You have a vector and the normal normalized vector is just from, see how it's maximum one, zero or minus one. And what you do is you divide your vector that you have with its own length. Okay. Now you can go to this homepage, the one we were at, and you can see that when you multiply a vector with a scalar, okay, uh, you can multiply it with a scalar right here, multiplying a vector by a scalar. Just, a scalar is just a normal number, remember? So a vector 7, 3 multiplied by 3 is going to give you 7 times 3, and then the y value is going to be 3 times 3. So it's you're just going to make it 3 times longer. And the same way you can divide a vector, okay? So if you divide a vector with its own length, if you have a big vector here, it's really huge, it's like 20 and then 10, pretty huge. And then you have zero, zero here. The length of this vector, how is how are we gonna calculate that? Well, we're gonna go here and we're gonna do a square root of, this is a 2D vector, by the way. Square root of 20 multiplied by two plus 10, no, uh, to the power of two, sorry, like that. So that's gonna give us what is that going to give us? Square root of 120 times 20, 2 times 4, what is that, 400? 400? Plus 100, so 500? 500, so the square root of 500. Now, I'm not smart, so I'm not going to bother even doing that. So, uh, let me do this. Square, Q of 100. Wait, 100 and then Q. How is that? No, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Well, uh, 10, 10, 500. How is that? Oh no, that's squared. I'm sorry. Square root. Okay, there we go. So 500 square root. I can't even handle a calculator. So that's 22.36. So 22.4 is about. 22.4 meters or whatever you want to call it, pixels or whatever, or not a unit basically. So 22 units. So the length of this vector is going to be 22.4. Okay. And to get the normal, we want to do the, call this vector V. The usually vectors are written with a line on top or in bold characters. Now I can't do bold, so I'll, I messed up a few of these places here as well to not write the line across or something. But I hope you understand all of this stuff is vectors. Scalars, you write with just a regular like letter. Uh, so the normal is the vector in itself divided by its own length, which would give us the vector in itself is 20 and 10 divided by 22.4. Okay, and then you can just go ahead and, and, and divide all of this, and then you'll get a beautiful number, which is going to be from 0 to 1, basically. Okay, so I, I, I can't really, and this is going to give you a resulting vector. Normal is a vector, it's not a scalar, so it's going to give you a vector. So let's calculate this, just to be sure that you get it. Calculator, 20 divided by... 22.4 is going to be 0 0.89. Let's just say 0 0.9 just to make it simple. So, and then 10 divided by 22.4. I should know this in my head 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 0.45. So, this normal is in the same direction as this, it's just that it's much smaller. Okay, it goes from 1 to whatever. So 0 to 1, basically. And that way you normalize your vector. Okay, and 
normalize. And now this video is pretty long, so I'm going to start ending it. But these are the things that you need to know. So as a summary, adding, subtracting, dot product, cross product, and normalizing a vector. These are the things you need to know. These are the things, oh, excuse me, these are the things you should really focus on and practice on because they're going to really help you. And go to this homepage, mathisfun.com, because it is fun. And just go through this once, like all of this stuff once, and you'll know. What the hell's going on? All this seems complicated, but all you have to do is just calculate and you will get a result. That's all you have to do. And then we'll talk about and see examples on how to use them later. All right. So thanks for watching. I hope this helped you in some way. I know it wasn't really that good of a video, but I tried as good as I could to show you and illustrate everything. So yeah, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.